I don't visit the country twice. Tanzania is an exception. From Arusha, I went to Lake Manyara, to Serengeti, Gorongoro Crater, and Tarangire Park. After the light rains of November, the parks have the look of spring. The years of the spring, the days of the morn, mornings at seven, the hillsides do pearl. The larks on the wing, the snails on the thorn, God's in his heaven, all's right in the world. Robert Browning I come to see my beloved Serengeti with my college friend Malu. Her psychiatrist sister, Julie, joins us. Our safari starts in Lake Manyara. It has varied terrain with the lush forest where impalas roam. We eat lunch overlooking the trees and the alkaline lake below. Above, in the black acacia tree, is a masked weaver. Its grassy nest led the Maasai to the water. Perch on a branch is a kingfisher, a red-billed hornbill. The vervet monkey sits on his bright blue balls. High on a tree is a kill, but where's the killer? peaceful scene of a family of giraffes. All hell broke loose as a herd of elephants surrounds us. A baby sits, comforted by mama. This baby is unafraid to take a dust bath on the road. Now we're inundated by baboons. Amused, we watch them devise a ladder to amuse the tourists. A water buck by the brook is a lovely last glimpse of lush Lake Manyara. Near town is a Maasai herding cattle. The modern Maasai or Warusha lives in a new house and his kids go to village school. In remote areas, the Maasai live in a mud hut. The women's pride is in their necklace. Malu, Julie, and I join in their chant and dance, wearing their necklaces. The men pride themselves in how high they can jump. Kids under five learn Swahili, English, and math. The Serengeti, at last, very recent, I'm in Tanzania. First, we pause for a hasty picnic. The graceful acacia makes me nostalgic and impatient to see the animals. But the iridescent blue and yellow starling holds us captive. Here's a flock having a conference around the waterhole. I'm happily reliving my safari here years ago. How exciting to see the first Thompson's gazelle with bronze stripe on its side. Grant's gazelle is bigger and has no brown stripes. On the bumpy red dusty road, we see our first zebra. What's this? The horn of buffalo, tail and mane of horse, face of goat, body of hyena. It's a wildebeest. Birds too appear. Here's a quarry bustard. Some guinea fowls pecking on the ground. The animals have the right of way. Never a dull moment. With zebras' good eyes and wildebeest's good smell, they protect each other. They graze in peace in the green savanna where lions don't go due to lack of cover. I thought a giraffe is a herbivore but it's eating sausage from a sausage tree. 
True to its name, Serengeti means endless plain. The landscape changes, and the tall grass, perhaps, just perhaps. Yes, our first cheetah. What a beautiful face. Right in front of us is a male lion. He looks so regal with his orange mane. He throws his arms and legs in the air, ready for a nap. At sunset, we're in the middle of a stampede of wildebeests from Masai Mara, Kenya. They're returning to Serengeti in search of tender grass, all running to the right. Suddenly, one turns around and leads them to the left. All follows, galloping in a file, as far as the eye can see. This phenomenal migration is what makes this trip to Malu. I rise at 5 a.m. for a hot air balloon ride. The bird's eye view of the Serengeti Plains up here, it's interesting to watch the zebras running in a single file. Elephants and their young are walking to the river. Here's a couple of silverback jackals. I'll skip the champagne for an early drive to see the cats. Instead of a breakfast feast, is a feast for the eyes. Here's a second sighting of lions. Five adults. We capture the two acacia trees, dramatically framing the lofty giraffe, thanks to Malu's quick eyes. From lofty heights, we fix our eyes to the ground. It's a second cheetah. My God, she has a cub. Mama hunches in a stalking position. Wait for me! Hurry up, cub! I want to check out these three ladies. The cheetah pauses to pose. Hey, cheetah, look at me. Without any other tourist jeep in sight, we savor our precious find. What a lucky charm my cheetah earrings and blouse are. In contrast, we see a horde of tourists lining up for a photo spot. In the shade is a pride of lions, 15 lionesses and several cubs. One female flirts with the other females. If she's in heat and can't find a male, she won't come to heat for a few months. The adults sit, licking their chops after a big feast. But the young ones have to play. Hey Simba, come play with me. I can't. I'm too stuffed. Oh, what an absolute delight. This is nature at its best. From a pride, we see a pod of hippos, that is. They cool off while the birds clean their back. What's this ox pecker doing on the giraffe's neck? Cleaning it too. 
Here's a tower of two adults and two baby giraffes. They browse on the higher acacia leaves. This is a topi, a large antelope with blue spots. Here's a baboon. Our guide who was born at the Serengeti used to play with baby baboons like this. Here's a hyena, a carnivore, cooling off from the oppressive heat. This tree is special because on it is another carnivore, a leopard. Beautiful coat marked with rosettes, unlike the black spots on a cheetah. Time to say goodbye to Serengeti and to my cats, the reason for my coming. We climb to a higher and colder region. Atop the hill is our lodging. Our destination, the Ngorongoro Crater. From the window, we get an overview of our next safari. We go 2,000 feet down the crater of the collapsed volcano. It's not really a crater, it's a caldera because it has living things. This is a conservation area where wild animals are protected. The animals are sitting down and looking relaxed. They sit in a circle for protection. Here's a surprise to the humans. Two lions sunbathing, showing no interest in the prey. Nearby is a pair of wildebeests. One whispers to its pregnant mate, I'll be the happiest zebra father to be. The zebra's tail, Julie observes, is braided, matching the body stripes. Even the birds are in pairs, they're gray crowned cranes. This brown ostrich is a female looking for a mate. Nearby is a male. They're black with pink muscular legs. Hippos soak their sensitive skin to avoid sunburn. We reach the lake, comes alive with bright pink flamingos. What makes Julie's trip is the flamingos feeding and dancing. The ground is dotted with white spring blossoms. This is paradise in the crater. We stop at the colorful town, Makoyuni. This woman gracefully carries a baby on her back. Women in vibrant colors walk to the market. We arrive at Tarangiri Lodge, greeted by water box. The beds are draped with mosquito nets at night. Rustic huts open up to a verdant valley. On the ground is a francolin. Buffalo weaver red-billed hornbill, lilac-breasted roller. The zebras come to the water hole to drink twice a day. A harem of impalas graze on the tender grass. The lone male impala looks with a warning. Leave my harem alone. We come to the river where elephants cross.
The old goes away to die to spare the young the trauma of death. Here's the elephant walk. Dick Dick, the smallest antelope. Though an adult, it has the innocent look of a fawn. This giant baobab tree is a witness to the countless herbivores and carnivores that walked around it. The whole landscape sings of living tales, tales of migrating grazers, browsers, and other plant eaters, tales of crossing elephants by the rivers and mud baths, tales of dancing flamingos by the White Lake, tales of stalking cats by the savanna. This special place in my heart, this endless plain, which literally means the Serengeti. The voices in this verdant, vibrant wilderness refresh the soul of one lover of nature like me.